labs. Some STEM students like them, some love them, some, like me, absolutely loathe them. You stand by a bench for three hours, desperately trying not to look like a moron in front of your friends and teachers. But when your badly designed experiment from the 70s inevitably doesn't work, you can always look to demonstrators for help. Demonstrators, usually PhD students, postdocs or lecturers, are in charge of the lab session, and are there to help students when they get stuck and assess them on their practical skills. Good demonstrators can make even the most frustrating practicals engaging and enjoying, and they can inspire students to become scientists themselves. But a single bad demonstrator can turn an otherwise agreeable lab session into a three-hour waking nightmare. I'm entering my third year as a chemistry demonstrator, and I've developed a five-point system that helps me do my job as terribly as possible. Chemistry is my area of expertise, but don't you worry, I want to share my horrible advice with as many people as possible. Biologists, physicists, medics, vets, computer scientists, and every other STEM discipline hopefully has something to learn here. Yes, even you engineers put down the paste. Number one, belittle those beneath you. As a demonstrator, you are the voice of authority. Your students will look to you for advice, but none of them want to look like idiots. As the closest thing to an expert in the room, a single careless comment from you can devastate your students' confidence in their abilities. Relish in this power as much as possible. If someone asks you a stupid question, make sure they know it was a stupid question. Rolling your eyes, making a sarcastic joke at their expense, or telling them to just read the manual are great ways of making those beneath you feel small. Better yet, make a game of it by picking on random people. If a student makes a mistake in your presence, and let's face it, they will, it is your job to announce that the circus is in town. Loudly announce their failure and full view of their peers. Make snarky comments to other demonstrators in earshot of the students. If you've done your job properly, no student will dare ask you for help again. Number two, geniuses generously use jargon. As a demonstrator, you've had years to grow comfortable with scientific language by cramming your brain full of theory. Your students, especially those straight out of high school, have a lot of catching up to do if they want to converse with someone as clever and sexy as you. Being asked to explain something from your field of expertise is a great opportunity to show off. As a teacher, there's a temptation to look all-knowing in front of your students. Prop up this flimsy facade to the best of your ability. Use technical jargon frequently and inaccurately. Make sure to remind your students how smart you are by starting your sentences with clearly and obviously, especially if you're discussing a concept they've yet to cover in their lectures, and super especially if it's a concept you yourself didn't understand until five minutes ago. If you don't know the answer to a question, just make something up. It's not like the student's gonna know the difference. When explaining a complicated topic, some demonstrators will start by using an oversimplified analogy and then have a conversation with the students about why the analogy is oversimplified. These demonstrators are morons. Uh-oh! Moron. Alert! Moron. Alert class! Number three, don't fraternize with the enemy. Students are like farts, foul-smelling, off-putting, and should never be acknowledged in polite company. 15 seconds of chat with your students about their day or how they're getting on with their coursework is a good way to build rapport and make you seem less intimidating. Such weakness is inexcusable in a demonstrator. Your students should perceive you like a Mongol warlord striding across the step atop a flaming horse. If they try and make conversation with you, cut them off mid-sentence and command them to get back to work. Any talking that doesn't relate to labs, even if the people talking are working perfectly capably, should be swiftly punished. Remember the old motto, those that yap will get the strap. Number four, purge the weak. If you're a demonstrator, you're smart, okay? You know it, your students know it, your family knows it, the neighbor's dog knows it. No, scratch that. You are a genius. And as a genius, it's your sacred duty to weed out students finding the course harder than you did. There's a replication crisis in academia for a reason, and we need more midwits like a hole in the head. Students that make mistakes will often get stressed. Good. Fail fast, learn faster is distilled copium. Don't debase yourself by briefly acknowledging the student's mistake and showing them how to improve. Make mountains out of molehills and obsess over the tiniest mistakes. Let the student's stress snowball to the point they can barely function. Finally, if the sadistic thrill of watching your student helplessly flail over the equipment wears off, just snatch it off them and do it yourself. With any luck, you will pop them off science for life. Number five, just phone it in. Let's face it, demonstrating is a drag. You're a researcher. You could literally be doing anything else with your day. So above all else, just half arse it. Don't read the lab manual before the session. If the practical is on a topic you haven't covered in four years, even better. Turning up five minutes early to help the other demonstrators set up is a rookie mistake. A pro knows to turn up at least 15 minutes late. Preferably drunk, hungover, or so baked you can barely string a sentence together. Once you arrive, spend at least 45 minutes in the toilet. Better yet, just spend the entire session on your phone in the spectroscopy room. Your students can't 
can't use their phones, but lucky for you, you aren't the one being assessed. If you catch someone forging data or doing something dangerous with the equipment, just let it slide, someone else will sort it. And if you don't feel like coming in, don't. The other demonstrators can pick up the slack for you. If you absolutely have to send an email explaining why you missed the session, you don't want to look too keen. Wait at least three days before sending it to the module head. If you follow all of these steps to the letter, they hopefully won't ask you back at all. Flaming horse.